I was visiting with my grandfather shortly before he lost his battle with cancer. It was time to go, and I was about to say goodbye when my grandfather said from his bed, the next time I see you, I guess it'll be up there. With tears in my eyes, I smiled and said, that's right, Grandpa, I'll see you later. I'll see you in heaven. Scripture says that there's going to be a grand and glorious reunion when Jesus returns. The trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, and we who remain will be gathered together with them in the clouds. I look forward to that day. The day I get to stand in the presence of Jesus. The day I get to be reunited with family and friends. But there's another reason I look forward to that day. You see, on that day, I get to meet my other brothers and sisters. All the precious lost souls that Jesus has also made part of his heavenly family. In this episode of Other Sheep, I want to tell you about one of those other brothers in the Lord. A fellow lost sheep that none of us will probably ever meet this side of heaven. His name is Ricky. Now, Ricky was born in Cuba and is one of an estimated 125,000 Marielitos, boat people, who came to this country to start a new life. Ricky's story is a sad tale of a young man who fell in with the wrong crowd and proceeded to make one bad choice after another until what remains of his life will probably be lived out in prison. Let me share Ricky's story with you. I have been in lots of trouble, Ricky says, and I've had plenty of time to think about the foolishness of my crimes. My wife, whom I love, has had to raise our two children alone. She finally divorced me, and I felt lonely, afraid of my future, and unloved. I knew no one cared about me, and I really hoped that I would die in prison, because when I was on the street, I heard so many people I loved the most. It was during this dark time in his life that the Lord brought two of our prison ministry volunteers into his life. They began leaving devotion materials in the visitor center at Ricky's prison. Listen as Ricky tells us what happened next. I knew nothing about the Bible. They gave me a few Bible studies, and when I got back to my cell, I thought of all kinds of questions. I wrote letters that had so many questions. I didn't think they would write back, but they did. And it felt good that anyone would care that much about me. When we were finally able to visit face to face, they asked if I would be interested in doing some Bible studies together. The first lesson I got was the story of Jonah. I had never read anything so interesting. There were questions to answer in the booklet, but I was so interested that I didn't do the questions until I had read it four or five times. More Bible studies were sent, and I couldn't wait to get them. I finished it all 17. As I read the Bible stories, I began to feel that God loved me too. For the first time in my life, I felt like someone special. Whenever my new friends came to visit, we had a devotion and Bible study. I didn't feel anymore that I was lost, hopeless, confused about life, and always angry and in a bad mood. Now I saw that prison is not the end. God gave me a chance that I didn't deserve. Jesus has taken all my sins away. He is my Savior. With this help, I can be a better person, respect others, and learn how to talk to people in general. I saw that even though I was in prison, I'm free. I am God's child, and I want to serve Him in any way I can. I can even talk to other inmates, and many want to hear more about my Savior. Over the years, I've encountered others like Ricky, troubled souls, lost in sin, until the Good Shepherd found them. And when Jesus claimed them as his own, when he poured his love into their hearts, they began to share their joy and their Savior with others. Listen as Ricky continues his story, and you'll see what I mean. I had a neighbor who was noisy, foul-mouthed, and filthy. He never said anything good to me. 
I always told him I pray for him. When I told him that God loved him, he just got nastier. He was so bad that I called him attitude. One day, others must have been really angry with him because when he came back to his cell, he asked me to pray for him. I did not give up on him, and now the Holy Spirit has brought him to faith. Never give up sharing God's word. I think Ricky offers us some pretty sound advice. Having witnessed the power of God's word, first on his own life and then on the lives of those around him, Ricky's words remind us to continue sharing the gospel. For truly, God's word has the power to change hearts and lives for here and for eternity. This is the rest of Ricky's story. I know that it was the Lord working through my friends that brought me to know my Savior. My life is changed and I know for sure that I am going to heaven. If you get a chance to visit a prison, please do it. There are others like me that need to know their Savior. God bless you. And I can't wait to meet you in heaven. Brother Ricky, I can't wait to meet you either. I look forward to that day we all get to stand in the presence of Jesus, the day the Good Shepherd welcomes all of us home. In anticipation of that great day, Ricky, I'll see you later. Join us again next time as we continue to explore the many places Wisconsin Lutheran Institutional Ministries goes in search of Jesus, other sheep.